I'm sure this happens to everyone at least once at some point. You're hopelessly lost down the YouTube rabbit hole of creators that you follow, who have all released videos about a particular project. Each video you see revs that creative engine in your skull, until that catching point when you just know, I must join this cult. So the next case study had to be the American Duchess 1910 wrap cape. The pattern and instructions are free to download on their blog, so step one was fetching those. I had it on file from late last year when a girlfriend and I made full-sized ones during a socially distanced weekend. I had a hard time narrowing fabric choices from my stash, which initially made me want to make several capes, but nobody got time for that. So I chose a kimono-style purple and a green lining because it was pretty and on brand. These are cottons with minimal stretch. Not ideal for something that needs to be tight-fitted, but probably okay for something like this. I made a quick mock-up of the scaled-down version to test fit. Most of the alterations needed were in the wraps themselves and the bottom hem. When I had a fit I was pleased with, I traced out the pattern pieces in a way that I could start brainstorming how the inside might work. The main challenge that I believe capes present in stop motion is how best to control their motion in each frame, which brings the focus to the internal structures which are meant to do just that. There is no one-size-fits-all solution for this problem, so it's important to consider the context of the cape. Will it be blowing in the wind or dragging on the floor? Are there stylized folds needed to make it conform to the design logic of the world it inhabits? Will it be taken off of the puppet at some point? These are just a few questions you'll want to be asking the design and animation teams, or just reviewing the script, to determine the complexity and control required. The executive decision was made early to have this be a garment that I could remove from the Chibi Me puppet and display on the Chibi Me dress form. Thus, I did not end up including any anchor wires that would fix it securely to the puppet. This also led to the fully finished lining instead of a partial facing like the Polonaise's upper skirts and the inclusion of ribbon ties. I knew that I was going to need wire along the edges that I wanted direct control, such as around the collar and along the hem. I decided against using a wire mesh or similar construction on hole because Chibi Me has no plans to take up parkour, nor would she consider doing so in this fashionable outerwear. Great pains were taken to keep the wire profile as thin as possible to avoid creating a bulky edge, but unfortunately you can still faintly see the wire on the bottom in the final. I noticed from the mock-up that the shoulders would need a little extra help keeping shape since they were not secured down, so I used a thin latex foam layer to pad those without inhibiting movement of the arm. To maintain the sharpish fold patterns, I added pieces of thin buckram to the collar and front edges of the cape. The stiff buckram creates ledges that the fabric predictably folds at, so even if it is manipulated out of shape, it will remember to go back where I want it. Of course, our good friend Gravity was not participating, and thus needed to be reintroduced. I did this via weighted lining near the hem. I was probably most wary of this aspect. More thought should have gone into the optimal shapes that this lining could have been, but I think it turned out fine. As a fun detail, I top-stitched the green lining before finishing everything off, a simple but effective embellishment. And thus, Chibi Me was initiated into the American Duchess Cape Cult.